Welcome to Pro Practice, your guide to piano mastery. I'm Josh Wright, and today's episode is based on the Prelude in G Sharp Minor, Opus 32, Number 12, by Sergei Rachmaninoff. Before we get started in today's tutorial, I'll just go ahead and play a few bars of this in case you are not familiar with this amazing piece. We'll stop there. This piece is so uh, beautiful. I love playing this piece. I've never performed it um, except for some hotel background music. I remember I was hired as a teenager <laughs> to play at this hotel during Christmas and I'd sprinkle in some classical music along with Christmas music. I've also taught this many times. It has a lot of special meaning for me as well. I'd like to dedicate this uh, tutorial to my amazing mom. She um, played this a bit in her undergraduate piano pedagogy um, studies. Sadly, after just a semester or two, she got cancer and had to drop out. Um, she survived. Um, she survived other cancers as well, so she really is quite the survivor. Um, and I'd like to dedicate this I rem to her. I remember as kids, we would hear her playing this occasionally, and it held a lot of special meaning um, to my parents as well because my dad went on a church mission, and at his like homecoming celebration at church, my mom uh, played this at the service. So uh, this has always been one of her favorite pieces. And because I'd heard, you know, this as a young kid, it just has always stuck with me. And it's a, a piece that I absolutely love. We are very blessed to have a recording of Rachmaninoff himself playing this. Uh, so I would highly recommend all of you check that out. Other recordings that I really enjoyed. Um, our Sergei Babayan's recording, that is pretty unparalleled, um, beautiful work, and also, of course, Vladimir Ashkenazi and many others have recorded this, and I think that you can find beauty in each of those recordings. Obviously, I'm partial to uh, Rachmaninoff himself playing this and Sergei Babayan, as I have um, done some studies with Babayan, and I hold him in my mind to be the greatest living pianist. He's just an incredible pianist and person. So I would recommend listening to a lot of different recordings. If you listen to Rachmaninoff's compared to many others, he is really extreme in his tempos. It almost sounds presto um, rather than allegro. But he takes the tempo indications that he wrote, of course, <laughs> uh, very literally. So I don't think these um, have any definitive amounts because you'll hear different amounts of retard and menomoso and accelerando and a tempo in um, various recordings but he takes it very extreme I'll just do my best to imitate of course I'm nowhere near his level uh, but he plays something like this to be quite slow and then he jumps there's actually a few differences in that recording uh, with some notation actually um, at the end well actually over in bar like 34 he plays which is written and I swear at the end it's 
and then he does that. Whereas it's written G sharp minor. But I... It sounds like he was using that leading tone um, to D sharp there. Uh, and a few other little things. So uh, it's interesting to listen to that recording and very informative, especially with tempo. I can't tell you how many times I've heard students bring this to me or play it in juries or whatever, and it's so boring. Heavy and no real creativity with the tempo. It is absolutely critical that you manipulate the tempo the way that Rachmaninoff has indicated. To whatever extent that you interpret that, um, of course, retards can be more or less extreme, but pay attention to those. Another thing that I think is critical before we start anything else in this tutorial is to develop a liquid fluid right hand and keep that soft. I'll show you some little tricks and ways of organizing things to help you get that right hand to be really, um, really fluid like that. But then make sure that the left hand absolutely leads and is so tragic. This was one of the preludes um, that was said uh, that Rachmaninoff played quite a bit. Um, uh, I read that in the preface. This is the Henley edition. I really like this edition. And um, in the preface, they always have such scholarly um, prefaces. And they were saying in that that he performed, this was one of the few that he performed all the time of his preludes. Of course, he played the famous one. This was, uh, I believe, I don't believe I mentioned this earlier, but published in late 1910, early 1911, somewhere in there. He wrote a lot of these in rapid succession. And with this set, the Opus 32, 13 preludes, he completed a cycle of 24 preludes. Um, so very interesting. And he has a little cyclical return um, in that last prelude back to the original C sharp minor prelude. Um, so definitely check that out. Do some studies on this. Okay, let's jump in to some basic technique work um, to get this a little bit more fluid in the hand because I've had to help a lot of students with various, various issues. I myself have had various issues. This one's never stumped me, um, but you know we all deal with different technical um, issues in our hands. And one thing that always helps me is to, first of all, look at fingering. This fingering is pretty obvious. Five, two, one is pretty good fingering here. But I think, uh, or pretty much the only fingering I would suggest, if you really want five, three, one, that's not as friendly in my hand as five, two, one. Okay. And you can organize it in groups of three, if you would like. So, and think of rotation within these groups of three. So rotate down, Rotate back and forth, and then rotate down, back and forth. Da, da, dum, ba, ba, bum. A lot of times what will happen is students will do this fine, and then they kind of spasm when they have to do that back and forth rotation. If you separate it in your mind, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, just as a practice method, then very much like Andine, if you think, And then it can take a somewhat confusing pattern. I think the Andine's a little harder, obviously, but this. Notice also the rotation overall that I'm doing in my hand. Yes, I'm rotating down and then back and forth. Okay, but I'm also coming down and around on these descending figures. So as I do this, A really good method as well, make sure you start with your hands on the keys that you're about to play. I know that sounds so obvious, but a lot of students will pull their hand off the key and then work way too hard. If you just lay them down and then practice finger staccato. A lot of times in the past, I've advocated for finger staccato to be a pluck, and I still stand by that. I think it's very good at activating the fingers, but something that might be even more helpful in a place like this where you're not moving a lot, um, like one of the dangers of plucking too hard is that you get too active of fingers. I think, just think of the key pressing your finger back up. I taught this in a lesson forever ago. 
when I was discussing that etude, if you think of the, the mechanism pushing your finger back up. So your finger staccato is literally just playing down and then letting go of that, and then the key itself pushes your finger back up. These little thoughts can make a huge difference at getting this nice and light and quick as well. So practice those little groups and then practice just that. Okay, and and always end up there so that you can come back down. You can do groups like that and you can do every variation of six rhythms. I've never actually tried this, but let's give it a try. So you can start from two, the second note, and you can do one, two, three, four, five, six, one. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Like that. Sorry, I messed up. Don't go to the one. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then start from the third note. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That one actually feels great. Um, and then do one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then do one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's from the fifth note. And then from the sixth note, one, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. You'll find one that just clicks in, probably. I, th I think you'll find one that clicks in better than others. Um, a lot of, like for me, if I think to there, to there, to there, that's actually a really nice impulse as well. I don't like to overdo that. I've heard some students really overdo that. I go, sorry hard to do um they really overdo that it slows you down where that keeps it nice and effortless okay let's talk about the left hand it's really tempting to go really hard to there because it's like oh that's my downbeat but as we see in a lot of Rachmaninoff I always reference that example from um the 18th 18th variation of the Rhapsody on a theme of Paganini, um, his fifth concerto, uh, beautiful work. Um, it's very normal in Rachmaninoff's music to have impulses that die away or phrases that die away, that nuance that's dying away. And that adds to the tragedy. Rather than kind of going to there, that sounds a little forced. So, and take a little time. It's interesting with how fast Rachmaninoff starts. He takes a ton of time to get to there. So make sure that you savor that. So while the right hand sounds improvised and lacy, like this Fioratura type, um, texture uh, like we see in Chopin's works you know that just sounds like it's you know dancing up there it always follows the left hand the left hand is free it has a lot of rubato it's beautiful and then retard and also don't accent your offbeats in an unnatural way. But again, those little diminuendos are counterintuitive. You think go to there, go to there, go to there. But actually, that adds to the tragedy. It really pulls on your heartstrings, pulls on the rhythm a little bit to do that. Taking a little bit of extra time on a weak beat emphasizes it in such a way that really brings out the character. Accelerando. Retard. Let's talk about rolled chords and pedal. This is a hot topic.